Hello everyone. Uh, uh, this is Ibrahim Saif, uh, uh, the CEO of Jordan Strategy Forum. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this uh, uh, initiative and this uh, event uh, this evening. Uh, our event is going to last uh, for uh, maximum one and a half hours. Uh, I appreciate uh, that uh, the GSF members and scholars are uh, joining us for uh, this discussion. I also would like to extend my appreciation to the World Bank Group uh, uh, and their representatives today, uh, whom will be presenting one of the findings uh, of uh, their uh, work. And also, um, I know that we have a number of participants from the government and from the academia, which it's also to our pleasure that they're joining us for this discussion today. Uh, this initiative is, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's about uh, uh, one of a series of talks that we're going to hold with the, uh, the World Bank. The World Bank, it's, it's going to, call, to be called Jordan Development uh, uh, Talks. And uh, uh, the World Bank has prepared, uh, and the idea is to, to disseminate five policy papers, uh, uh, each of these papers addressing uh, a, a specific topic, uh, which uh, with, with, with the background is, is, is how really we can uh, on one hand, boost domestic growth, uh, encourage uh, private investment, and hopefully uh, contribute to reducing unemployment and poverty. Uh, the paper of today, we started this series with a quite interesting paper. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a work in progress, and I, I leave it to the World Bank to uh, set the tone on how we're going to uh, participate the finding of uh, this paper. It's fiscal policy, poverty, and inequality in Jordan, the role of taxes and uh, the role of taxes and public spending, and how that's impacting the inequality uh, in Jordan. Um, with us, the event is going to be broadcasted live on Jordan Strategy Forum YouTube channel. Questions and comments also can be uh, received through Jordan Strategy Forum channel, or please by raising your hands on, 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 uh, on the screen uh, in front of you. Um, our speakers for today, I am going to moderate the session. Our speakers today, it's going, I'll, I'll give the mic shortly to Dr. Uh, Saadiya uh, uh, Rafiqat. She's the senior country economist for Jordan from the World Bank Group, who's been working with us and, and collaborating with us. Then uh, Dr. Laura Rodriguez, she is an economist from the World Bank Group, also residing in Amman. And from the, our side, the GSF, it's going to be uh, Dr. Ghassan Omid, head of the research at the GSF, is going to present our view on the topic that we are addressing, which is fiscal policy, poverty, and inequality in Jordan and the role of the fiscal policy. And uh, also uh, Mr. Uh, Ali Samara, uh, a partner from East and Young, and he is the tax expert in the uh, group Earth and Young that is going also to address uh, issues related to the study that we are addressing today. Without any further ado, I'll uh, pass it on to Dr. Saadiya, uh, probably to have a few words. Uh, and then uh, I think that uh, Lara is going to present the findings and then we'll open the floor for discussion. Dr. Saadiya, please. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Dr. Saif. Um, it's a, first of all, let me say that it's a pleasure for us uh, to be uh, in this talk and get the Jordan Development Talks uh, uh, started uh, in collaboration with the Jordan Strategy Forum. So it's a very exciting, exciting movement moment for, for us. Um, I, I just want to speak briefly before giving the floor to Laura who's the co-author of this paper and who's going to present this particular study. And I just wanted to lay the background for this uh, work. Uh, this, the Jordan Development Talk series is part of uh, the work that uh, World Bank has been undertaking under uh, ASA, which is called the uh, 
which is called the, the Fiscal Public Expenditure Review. It's a series of uh, policy papers, as Dr. Ibrahim Saif explained, and, and, and the rationale for these policy papers is to look at uh, the uh, issues related to the fiscal policy specifically. So we have done almost around to fix uh, five to six papers and some, are, some of them are under preparation currently as well. And the idea is from today till almost end of June to basically have a fortnightly discussion on each of these paper and bring these papers in the public domain. Um, uh, so that's what's going to, going to be happening. The next discussion that will be taking place is going to be on April 4th. And it's basically related to pensions and the so social security cooperation. And I'm really hoping that uh, most of you who have tuned in here can also join us uh, for that interesting talk as well. And uh, we can benefit from your view. One more thing that I would like to add very briefly is that uh, part of the work that Laura is presenting today also featured in our core uh, publication, which is called the Jordan Economic Monitor. The GEM, as we call it briefly, basically it's a biannual publication of the World Bank. And basically it looks at the economic recent development. And one of the report is prepared around the spring meetings, the other one around the fall meetings. And this paper was part of the fall 2020 GEM uh, prepared around October uh, of the last year. We will also be uh, making that report available after this event, even though there has been a slight lag in uh, getting that published. And we also, we're also very excited to let you know that we are currently preparing the, the spring 2021 GEM. Um, and that we will be launching sometime early May to mid-May, and we will be disseminating it uh, hopefully in collaboration with one of the think tanks and having a focused discussion on that one. With uh, this brief uh, explanation uh, and uh, welcoming you all, I would like to pass this uh, to Laura for a presentation and over to you, Laura. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sadia. Thank you, Sadia. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Saif and the Jordan Strategy Forum for hosting us uh, today. It's a pleasure to um, be here. Um, let me share my screen with the presentation. I hope you can see it. Uh, let me know if, if not. No, it's okay. We see. We can see it. Please go ahead. Um. So this paper is on fiscal policy, that is of the role of taxes and public spending in helping reduce poverty and inequality in Jordan. And it's a co-author with Matthew Waipoyo from the Poverty and Equity Practice at the World Bank, who's also here uh, today and um, will be speaking if, if uh, needed and will be taking questions over the chat. If there are so let me start by explaining briefly, what do we do here? It is called fiscal incidence analysis. And in lay terms, that means that we're looking at who's receiving government transfers and who's paying taxes, as well as how much they receive or pay. And taxes and transfers is what we call fiscal instruments. So in terms of taxes, we look at both direct taxes and indirect ones. So that's personal income taxes, but also GST and special sales taxes and excises in alcohol, tobacco, mobile phones, etc. In terms of transfers, we look at NAF and the red compensation scheme, we look at indirect subsidies, and also to in-kind benefits in education and health, which although they are not uh, monetary uh, benefits, let's say, they are in-kind, we can assign what we think the households would have to pay if they were, um, if, if they had to pay for using these services, these public services. So what we do is that we look at the taxes and transfers from the fiscal accounts of 2018 and allocate those to households based on the information available in National Representative Household Survey and making adjustments for administrative data when needed. And what's interesting about fiscal incidence analysis is that we assess the distribution not only of each fiscal intervention independently, but also we look at the whole system, how much it's doing as a whole, to reduce poverty and inequality. So we know that um, before the pandemic, 
Jordan was already under significant fiscal pressure. Poverty rates had been stagnant probably at best. And as in many other countries, the COVID-19 uh, shock hit and hit vulnerable and poor households very hardly. And poverty rates are likely to rise as a consequence of this. And the usefulness of looking at the fiscal system is that it is a very useful tool to reduce poverty and improve equity very fastly. So it's useful to know where do we stand at the outset of the pandemic. The good news is that the fiscal system in Jordan we find is progressive, but only modestly so. So more could be achieved to further its poverty reducing and its equity enhancing impact. Now, let me dig in a little bit more into the detail of the results. So this graph that you see here presents the relative distribution of fiscal instruments. That means it's showing how much is paid or received by households as a percentage of their income. And households are ranked here from the poorest in the left of the graph in decile one to the richest households in decile 10 uh, to the right of the graph. So the bars represent the different fiscal instruments and the lines represent the overall fiscal system. So the line with the circle shows uh, the total uh, net contributions or net benefits of the fiscal system. And the line with the triangles represent the same, but when we exclude the in-kind non-cash benefits. So the first thing to note is that uh, the, the fiscal system overall is progressive. That is, we see that the poorer households are net beneficiaries of the system, and the richest households in this L10 are net contributors to the system. But um, when we look at the contributions of the richest households as a percentage of their market income, we see that the net contributions are actually relatively small, only about 8% of their market income. Moreover, when we look at the um, not just at the top decile, but at the upper middle half of, of the whole distribution of households. And we look at that uh, triangle non-cash, uh, sorry, total cash impact of the fiscal system. We see that that line is, is kind of relatively flat, which means that the net cash fiscal contribution increases only modestly when we go to the upper middle to the top half of the distribution, to the top of the distribution. That means that the pattern of taxes and spending could be made to benefit the poor and the middle classes further. That line could be made deeper. There is room for that. Now, we can uh, have a bit of a detailed look at the different fiscal instruments to try to understand better why, why the, the shape of, of these uh, lines is the way it is. Firstly, let's start with direct taxes, which are the yellow bars. And you can see that you can um, mainly see them only for the top, for the richest households. So that is uh, good. But they are a very small percentage of the richest households income, only about 3% of their market income. Indirect taxes, on the other hand, are paid by everyone, but they represent a greater burden of the poorer households as a share of their income. Indirect subsidies, they are received by most households because these are not targeted fiscal instruments. And in contrast, when we look at health and education benefits, we notice that they represent a large share of the market income, especially for households at the bottom of the distribution. So in fact, we, we find that most of the progressivity of the fiscal system in Jordan is coming from this uh, non-cash health and education, especially education benefits. And this is reflecting the fact that poor households have more children in general, and that they tend to use uh, particularly education, public education, but also that richer households tend to um, steer away from it and, and use private education much more. So they don't receive much of these uh, education benefits. Now, let me um, talk a little bit about the overall contribution of the whole fiscal system to poverty and inequality. And to do this, we look at 
um, how does poverty and inequality evolve when we go through the different uh, income concepts? So we start with market income, that is the income um, pre-fiscal policy. And then we look at what's the final uh, poverty and inequality in the final income. That is after we add the contributions of all these uh, taxes and spending. So let's start with inequality, which is measured by the Gini index, that's the blue um, line there. And as a whole, we find that the Jordan's current fiscal system reduces inequality by about, about six points in the Gini index. But when we consider only the monetary tax, uh, only the monetary um, tax system benefits, that is when we exclude these in-kind services, which, which are not really cash, um, based, the reduction in inequality is much smaller. It's only about 2.6 points in the Gini. In terms of poverty, so that's the green line in the graph, we also find that there's some poverty reduction that is being brought by the fiscal system. And that most of it goes, happens when we look at um, the change from market to disposable income. That means it's happening when we're looking at the impact of direct taxes and transfers. But after that, not much changes. And um, poverty ends up being very close to the national uh, poverty rate when we look at uh, consumer public income. So the overall fiscal system has some impact on poverty and inequality, uh, but how does this performance of Jordan stand in an international context? So here we look at data that we have available for other countries around the world, other developing countries around the world, where similar studies have been conducted. And so this graph uh, ranks all those countries uh, according to the level of inequality reduction that is achieved through their fiscal systems. And we have Jordan in there, and we find that jo Jordan stands in the bottom half of countries in terms of the degree of inequality reduction that's achieved through fiscal policy. So there's definitely scope to improve the performance of Jordan. There's, there are many countries that are um, doing better in this regard. Now, how about in terms of poverty? And here we have the countries, the same countries that rank according to their poverty reduction effect um, from the ones that reduce poverty the least to the ones that reduce poverty the most. And in terms of country rankings, Jordan is a little bit better in this graph, but there are two caveats to make. First is that um, there are many countries that are not doing very much at all to reduce poverty through their fiscal policies. So the bar here is, is not that high. And even when we look at Jordan's absolute performance, uh, how many points of poverty reduction is achieved through the fiscal policy, that absolute number is not too large. And in fact, it's about half of what's achieved in the top three performing countries. So again, significant scope to improve what Jordan is doing through the fiscal system. Now, wh why does Jordan stand where it does in these international comparisons? So we look at um, revenue and spending as a percentage of GDP in Jordan, and we find that it's actually uh, not too low. It's actually high compared in an international comparison. But perhaps there's something about the composition of that spending that can tell us a bit um, more about Jordan's performance. So here um, we look at the effectiveness of different fiscal instruments in reducing inequality. So this effectiveness is how much uh, inequality each is being reduced by each fiscal instrument. But the effectiveness also depends on, on the budget that's actually allocated to that instrument in the country. So you could have a very uh, progressive fiscal instrument, but if only a small amount of the budget is, is dedicated to that instrument in a country, then it's not going to be able to, to do much. So this is what we look here in this graph. So the bars represent the budget. That is how much the instrument costs if it's a spending uh, instrument, or how much revenue it's bringing in if it's um, a tax. And the dots in the graph represent the effectiveness, that is the 
inequality uh, reduction per JOD spent or, or um, received uh, in that, uh, by that instrument. And overall, we noticed that the, the dots are higher, so they're more effective for those instruments that tend to have lower allocations in the budget. So in Jordan, there's a heavy reliance on indirect taxes and there's a low spending on targeted transfers compared to other in instruments that are less effective as redistribution tools. So perhaps there is scope to try to balance a little bit better um, these allocations to improve uh, the uh, inequality reducing impacts of the fiscal policy, the fiscal system in Jordan. So finally, what we do is we simulate some, some potential alternatives. It's, it's nothing concrete, some ideas of, of how could this um, be achieved in, in potential. So first we look at a potential GST reform, which could eliminate lower rates and exemptions on various goods and services. But we also look at the technical expansion that's actually currently ongoing and could be complemented with better targeting of the NAV um, cash transfers. And when we look at these two, two reforms, we can see that the inequality reduction effect of the fiscal system could be enhanced by one additional point. But actually, this doesn't have to come at an increased um, fiscal expenditure. Moreover, when we think that the bread subsidy has no budget allocation in 2021, the, uh, the savings could be larger. Or perhaps if we think that that, um, that budget could be targeted towards some poverty reducing programs, then uh, the contributions to poverty and inequality could be further enhanced. So just to summarize and conclude, we know that the COVID-19 crisis have struck many countries, including Jordan, hitting the, the poor and the vulnerable very hard. But this crisis represents not only a need for fiscal reform, but it's definitely an opportunity to do more, especially through the fiscal system, to reduce poverty and inequality. So we think that an assessment such as the ones presented here of where the current system stands, a description where, of where Jordan is now, could help contribute to this aim. We can think about how more revenue can be collected in a neutral or in a progressive manner, and how um, more spending could be done in targeted fiscal instruments that uh, are more effective in reducing poverty and enhancing equity in the country. So I'll leave it here for now. I'm happy to um, take any questions and look forward to the discussion and the comments from the panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laura, for this very interesting uh, presentation and, and findings and, and uh, conclusion that you uh, drew towards the end. The fact that uh, Jordan is on the lower bottom of the effectiveness of basically fiscal tool in reducing inequality or poverty is, is quite astonishing. And uh, probably the time is very relevant to, to have such a discussion uh, with this ongoing debate in the country now, in light of the catastrophe in one of the Jordanian insult hospital, which is talking about the quality also of the services that uh, that is part of this public spending, which aims to uh, bring society more together. It's a, it's a case where uh, the assets and investment by the government turns into liability on, on the government, which is quite even politically is, is, is not acceptable anymore. But uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll leave that for uh, the discussion. I have a few uh, uh, more remarks to make, but um, uh, personally, I have read the study. I know that there is a technical uh, annex to the study for those who really wants to look at the technicalities of how these calculations were made and which data set is being used. Uh, but I'll move immediately to uh, Dr. Ghassan Omid, um, Head of Research at the Jordan Strategy Forum. Uh, Dr. Ghassan, I know you have a few slides to share with us uh, regarding the, uh, your comment on the study. So 
I'll give you the floor for 10 to 15 minutes before I move to uh, Mr. Ali. Dr. Ghassan, please. Can you see the screen, Dr. Ibrahim? Yes, we can, we can. We need you to unmute yourself, uh, Dr. Ghassan. We can see you, we can hear you, please. Yeah, okay. Yeah, go ahead, doctor. Yes. Yeah, sure. I will not take more than eight to nine minutes, I promise. But let me first, on behalf of the Jordan Strategy Forum, thank the World Bank team for this wonderful piece of work, really. It brings freshness to economic research about Jordan's public finance in terms of it's based on some detailed numerical analysis, the impact of changes in the tax law here and there, uh, and their impact on poverty, inequality, or even as a share of the poor people's income, which is really good. Dr. Ghassan, please share your presentation on the screen. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Yes. Just few highlights about the World Bank's results. Uh, the one that I really liked is the most obvious, but in terms of calculating its impact, I think is very encouraging, which is point number four. Indirect taxes, sales taxes increase inequality. It's a greater burden on the poor. I think people, my educated guests in Jordan do not appreciate the extent of its regressiveness in the Jordanian economy. And I think this is at least one point that I really liked. Uh, our objective at the JSF from this presentation is to really put your uh, effort in its fiscal policy framework by highlighting some observations about public finance in Jordan. To start with, allow me to reinstate, to, in, to, to justify why the government fiscal policy is there in the first place. I think we should all remember that fiscal policy rests on three premises. To improve the allocation of resources and efficiency, and as you said, to address distributional disparities, but equally important to promote macroeconomic stability in terms of the annual change in real GDP, inflation, and public debt. If we look at public finance in Jordan, since the fiscal year 2000 or even before, no Jordanian government really has managed to experience to enjoy a surplus in its budget. Deficits are the norm and public debt is increasing and probably will hit the 110% mark of GDP come the end of the 2020 official figures. Equally important observation is the major components of current spending. Few items, you're talking about the military, wages, pensions and interest payments account for something like 84, 85% of total current spending. This means there isn't much leeway in terms of public expenditure. The other side of the coin, tax revenues in Jordan are relatively low. Yani, nobody argues in Jordan to hit <coughs> the Danish tax effort or even the Belgium tax effort, but with 14.8% to GDP ratio total tax revenues, I think relative to any standard, this is low. And if there is change to come in the future, 
that's way that's where we really appreciate your work in terms of changing in the tax law and the impact of any change on poverty and income distribution as you said sales tax to total tax revenue is high it's the highest it's much lower than in morocco uk and germany plus Sales tax is a major component of total local revenues. They compose something like 48%, which is internationally as well, it's high. Now, if we really look at the tax rate, we can see currently there are many preferential tax regimes. You're talking about banks from 35%. Some sectors are exempted and some like pharmaceuticals and textiles, 14%. That obviously has created a multiplicity of tax regimes and unfortunately has fractured the tax base itself. As a result of the preferential tax system regime based on the Ministry of Finance and the IMF's work, they actually came up with two very interesting measures the productivity of the tax system in terms of corporate income tax and the productivity of the tax system in terms of the general sales or value added tax. And the definitions are here printed or typed in dark navy blue. Productivity in Jordan is marginally higher than in Algeria, in corporate income tax, and productivity of the sales tax is equally low marginally higher than only Egypt. Georgia, Morocco, and Algeria are way higher. That obviously needs re-examination as well. Plus, based on the Ministry of Finance and the IMS's work, the preferential tax treatments contribute to significant amount of tax expenditures or foregone revenues. Based on their work, in 1978, 90, 2017, 2018, tax expenditures were equivalent to around the 10% of GDP. And that is relative to any standard. Again, you're talking about a big chunk of the gross national product. The implications of all of this, just to remind you, fiscal policy should promote, support economic growth and development expand the social safety net, reduce inequality in other, way, in other words, and improve the quality of public goods and services. We really cannot overstress the two recommendations. Of course, there are others. Relative to the size of the national economy, the tax effort is low. 14, 15% is not sufficient. Plus, more diversification is needed. This would increase el tax elasticity, el change in tax revenues relative to changes in tax in GDP. Our calculations indicate that tax elasticity in Jordan is somewhere between plus 0.7 and 0.9. So obviously below a unitary elasticity, the government will always be running after the performance of the economy. The economy grows by, for example, 5%. Public tax revenues increase by something like seven and a half, by three and a half to four percent. That is obviously a burden on future government if it remains as low as it is. And the second recommendation is tax expenditures should be re-looked at more closely and where possible do away with them. Proper use of tax expenditure has really become a priority. We should look at expenditures where they promote, where they encourage greater levels of employment. And thank you for listening. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ghassan. Um, before I move to Mr. Ali, Laura, I think, uh, Dr. Ghassan has brought the issue of um, tax efforts and tax elasticity. I know that in the study, you have already um, mentioned what is the also tax level 
not only the tax revenue, but also other non form of taxation, which puts the figure uh, around 23, if I remember correctly, 24% of the GDP. I think we need to allude to all form of domestic revenue as part of the uh, 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 enhancing domestic revenue when it comes to uh, the size of the budget relative to uh, the GDP or the size of uh, the tax relative to GDP, just to uh, have a, a, a rather uh, comprehensive view. Um, on the tax productivity, we can comment on that, but uh, I want to move immediately to Mr. Ali, uh, uh, partner in E and Y, and uh, I must uh, uh, also comment that we do appreciate that Mr. Ali is with us, so, although he has some health issue <laughs> between yesterday and today. Uh, I was just informed uh, quietly that he tested positive. We really appreciate that you're joining us today despite uh, this uh, condition, uh, Ali, but uh, we won't put any more pressure. Please, the floor is yours. And we know that you've been working with tax department and tax laws probably the entirety of your career. So it's, it's quite interesting to hear uh, your view on what we're discussing, please. But can you get closer, Ali, to the mic, please? You yeah, can they highlighted, both studies, they, they highlighted the important of, of taxation and those. And, and really, in order to improve the overall financial situation, and uh, position of the country, and increase and back to physical policies, we have certain uh, homework, we have certain things to do. Firstly, the most important is the introduction of an overall tax reform model in order to limit the tax evasion and capture all sources of corporate and individual income tax that are not clearly defined and reduce the volume of uncollected tax. Ali, um... If, if you can get closer to the mic, please. Uh, so, uh, I think uh, the most important is the introduction of an overall Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Please. I'm sorry, I'll... Um... No, no worries. This is this is much better now. Okay. Many, many thanks, Dr. Uh, many thanks, uh, World Bank team and uh, Dr. Ghassan. We all agreed that sales tax is, is, is a huge uh, exposure and it is painful for poor and... and, 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 and and let's say an inequality uh, issue in the, in the kingdom. Uh, but in order to improve the overall financial position in the country and in increase the impact of physical policies, we have to, to, to have introduction of a, an overall tax reform model in order to limit tax evasion. That are all resources of corporate and individual income tax that are not clearly Fine to reduce the volume of uncollected tax. Some in some aspects, we have certain points that it can be take, taken into consideration. Firstly, revision of personal income tax, individual income tax. You believe that individual income tax since 2005 to 2015 and uh, 2020 does not reach more than 50 million only, whereas employee taxation used to be 100 million in 2000. In, and in this year, it is 200 something. Uh, introduction of a clear definition of tax mechanism for transfer pricing and base erosion and profit shifting. We have a lot of things to do in the in the terms of uh, transfer pricing in, in the country. Uh, reduc the reduction in the volume and amount of tax breaks and exemption. Currently, we are very generous in the tax exemption and, and, and breaks. I think we have to do something even if we can suspend the exemption for temporary period only during COVID uh, pandemic, uh, but keeping support of 
small and very small business. Improvement of tax information technology. Currently, we don't have that. We have big issue with data storage and data about tax, uh, about taxable income and revenue in the in the kingdom. In addition, improvement in number of equality of tax professionals in the income tax department. You believe that we have 1,500 employees, only about 100 employees, they are working on large taxpayer unit and they are collecting 85% of tax liability. Whereas the rest, they are engaging in small and very small and medium and medium taxpayers. And my, my suggestion is let's seize the working or, or dealing with very small and small taxpayer for two and two or two to three years, and focus the, the 1,500 employees on information and data improvement in order to collect as much as information from taxpayers and economy and business in Jordan. And in addition to reform the application and collection of GST in the country, we have some sort of issue, some sort of erosion that we see that people they are voluntary registered in GST, and we have seen a lot of uh, a lot of leakage in, in in this part. Well, in, in my opinion, we need to keep subsidized and we need to keep the uh, exemption or zero rated or low rated on on sales tax. Sales tax collection in the kingdom comprises of two parts. Basically, cigarettes is about one billion per annum. Petroleum production and derivatives, the same is about one one million, and uh, importation, particular cars and importation from China, it is about one point two billion. Service sectors, most well, particularly, and 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 concentrate on telecommunication. The, the whole collection from service sector is about five hundred million, of which fifty percent comes from telecommunication. A tax reform similar to one that has been completed, concluded, concluded in Saudi Arabia, in Emirates, in Egypt, in Oman. We used to be the first country in the region for taxation, Morocco, Jordan, Tunisia. But unfortunately, in the last five years, we became behind this one. A review of current trade policies and international treaties. We have WTO and we have Arab free trade area regulation, which gives a hundred percent exemption from all custom duties. And we are seeing that the custom duty on products that are imported and from certain area or certain countries that are not exempted, ending up paying custom duty and, and sales tax upon importation is sixty percent. Whereas if you import through these uh, cities, you will pay only 20%. So we have 40% loss in this manner. I think we can suspend or we can temporarily make a suspension for such cities uh, during COVID-19. We have big issue in Aziza, and, and there is some sort of, of, uh, of, of, of uh, abuse of Aziza and ultimately uh, leading for evasion and creating significant financial burden on the treasury. With respect to, to ASISA, we should focus on tourism activities and, and, and we should define the whole, uh, the whole uh, uh, relationship between tax and custom duty of ASISA and, and the kingdom. In addition to introduction of attractive invest investment policies, including long-term investment laws and regulations, introduction of citizenship investment program for investors who are burdened by FATCA or common reporting system, which is called the Arabian uh, FATCA, requirements and citizenship of neighbor countries. The taxation system in Jordan follow the territorial principle of income generated in, in other words any income generated for those those uh, new citizens will be exempted if if the money source is not jordanian the current model requests an investment of 2.5 billion uh, 2.5 million in order to get the the jordanian nationality 
which is extremely high and unreasonable. And if you compare it with any other country, you will see that we are behind that. In light of health and economic social impact on COVID, formal requests should be made for World Bank, International Monetary, and all lenders in order to schedule a loan or exemption from interest or having some sort of soft uh, treatment or Jordanian burden of such loan. And, and finally, uh, I think whatever mentioned about sales tax, I do agree with, with that, but I'd like to keep the zero rated and, and low rated for food and subsidized products to be in the, in the place. And I recommend to have introduction a strategy to build upon a combination of these two aspects. I meant uh, review of sales tax and uh, improve the tax collection in the kingdom. Many thanks. Very much, uh, Ali. Uh, I know. Ali is coming from the very practical background and uh, on, and he is uh, very much someone very familiar with the existing institutional capacity and how is the internal dynamics. I think he's simply talking about this uh, 10 or 90. I mean, 10% should focus on the 90% of the revenue and it should be the other way around with uh, focusing on the uh, large uh, sort of uh, potential clients and instead of uh, somehow wasting probably resources on, on, on the small scattered kind of business. The issue of data and, and, uh, and database as well is as relevant. And I, I know that in, in your paper and in one of the issues uh, uh, in the paper that you really talk about how we can uh, reconsider looking at the personal income tax and expand that uh, sort of tax base somehow and what kind of incentive structure what kind of tax amnesty whatever measure that can be used in order to increase the tax revenue uh, correctly but also increase the distributional if impact of whatever tax uh, we are collecting and spending i think it's 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 very relevant to what we're discussing um, I'll open now the floor for discussion. I have a few few questions uh, which I'll uh, start with, and anyone wants to make a comment, uh, please raise your hand or send me a text, and I'll, I'll communicate that. I know Laura that you already have two comments. One of from Her Excellency Majd, which is talking about what can we do in terms of water, electricity, and how can we improve again the distribution of the impact on poverty and reducing it? We know that when you include uh, non monetary public spending, that non direct monetary spending on education and health and on subsidies, then uh, you improve uh, immensely the Gini coefficient, which you might need to elaborate a little bit for our audience who are not familiar with that. Um, and also, I know that. Um, Mr. Karim Kouar as well asked about NAF and, uh, and some, some comments on, on again, uh, the direct impact of improving the, um, uh, the um, how we're targeting uh, the allocation of our subsidies. Uh, uh, and uh, I think when, uh, again, Jordan was on the lower part of the uh, countries in terms of the distributional or uh, in reducing poverty, uh, it is because it's a combination of, of two things, I think. One is that general sales tax, it's uh, not, uh, it's, it's rather regressive rather than progressive. And it's normally when, when, when there are even exemptions within the general sales tax, probably the distributional impact of that, Laura, and you, can, you, can, you may comment on this, is not as good because those uh, on the richer uh, side of the society will be spending more than the poorest side. And hence, this exemption would uh, not contribute to improve the efficiency of either tax exemption or on the other way, uh, uh, side, uh, tax expenditures or tax uh, uh, exemption. 
yeah, and you know, when, when, when Dr. Ghassan talks about tax expenditures, we have to probably look at the exemption side, which also Ali alluded to when he talks about customs, etc., etc., and what we can raise and what to do with this. And I have rather questions to, uh, to motivate the discussion, which is, uh, unless you really improve the governance and the targeting of public spending, then not necessarily that you would reach a better result. So let's be also quite open about uh, what can be done to improve the, the governance and, and, and the control of this. As much as we're talking about the slogan of no taxation without representation, no representation without taxation, this is something at the heart of what we're discussing. And probably the events that we've been living over the last few days is a quite uh, a testimony for this. Laura, I'll, I'll leave you with, with this remark to respond to. And again, I am opening the floor for discussion. I know that Mr. Musa Sackett has also a comment on the uh, industrial sector. I'll give you the floor, Musa, after Laura. Please, uh, Laura, if you want to uh, handle some of these comments that you already received, so just share it with our audience, please. Thank you very much. Yes, um, and thank you, Dr. Ghassan and Dr. Ali for, for your um, comments as well. Um, yes, let, let me start with uh, one point that was made by Dr. Ghassan that I think is very important, which is that uh, fiscal policy actually has many different um, aims. And we're focusing in this paper on, on one of them, which is, which is the distributional uh, impact of fiscal policy. But as he rightly pointed out, there's, there's also the aim of resource allocation, bringing revenues uh, and promote macroeconomic stability, which should not be forgotten. Actually, I, I think they tend to be at the forefront of uh, much analysis of fiscal systems. So, so we're trying to just bring this, this distributional uh, angle uh, to the forefront to think about that uh, when we think of fiscal systems. But certainly, uh, yes, it's, it's not the only aim. So I think that's a very important point to, to have stressed. Um, yeah, I, I greatly appreciate the comments on the on the you know composition of of taxes in Jordan. You certainly um, you certainly know much more about that as as we do. And and one aspect that is interesting, um, and I, I should also highlight here, is that we are focusing on on the taxes that we see have more direct. Um, um, I mean, more directly allocated to households, but there's certainly others that are important in the country that are more difficult to tackle from a household distributional angle. For instance, corporate taxes, right? It, it's difficult to allocate them to households um, because uh, in theory, they, they, um, they are paid by uh, companies, corporations. So they're not really featuring this analysis, but certainly are a very important component of, of the fiscal system. And, and those, um, Yes, uh, shouldn't also be, be left aside, but uh, but the analysis uh, that we present here is based on the household burden of the fiscal policy or the household uh, benefits of the fiscal policy. Um, so, um, what else do I have? Um, yes, I think uh, uh, there was also the the point stress about the low tax expenditures in Jordan overall, and and our analysis is. Uh, even though it doesn't cover all forms of taxation, as I just said, our analysis is, is consistent with this uh, from an international comparison perspective, even though Jordan cannot aspire to, to become Denmark, uh, even when we look at developing countries in similar positions to Jordan, we, we see that there is definitely potential uh, to, to try to push for a more equitable uh, system and to increase uh, tax revenue collection and spending on forms of uh, taxation and spending that are more efficient in terms of poverty reducing and, and equity enhancing effects. Um, Dr. Saif uh, mentioned uh, the expenditure side of things. And, and again, here we look at around 30% of, um, sorry, Jordan spends about 30% of GDP in, uh, in um, social spending. And we look in this analysis at about um, close to 9% of it. So, so again, there's other components that are not covered by this, but these are uh, highly relevant ones. As well as I have. Um, on Dr. Ali's point about uh, overall tax reform and um, evasion, exemptions, data and information 
uh, certainly those are important parts of, of a tax reform. Um, here, the, the analysis is a little bit more, um, more based on, 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 the, on the de jure, the, the regulation of the overall uh, design of the tax system, but certainly the actual implementation, how, how much uh, are you actually able to, in reality, um, collect um, in Jordan. That's, that's uh, improving, that can help improve the progressivity of the system if, if there are actually large parts of the country that uh, even though should be contributing to the system or should be receiving benefits, but they're not because they're not covered, uh, that's going to hinder the performance of the system. And uh, some of it is already incorporated in this analysis, um, but, uh, but certainly an aspect uh, from a practical standpoint uh, to consider, and, and uh, I'll leave it to the panelists that uh, know much more about uh, the situation of, in Jordan about uh, to comment on, on those points. Um, and, and then there, to, to him, there was uh, the comment about uh, GST, uh, sales tax exemptions. And um, yes, although we find that um, you know, sales taxes and exemptions on, on those that do benefit the poor, in, uh, in reality, actually, because richer households tend to consume more overall, they also benefit much more uh, from those exemptions because their consumption in aggregate is, is bigger. So there, there is need to think about uh, how do we balance these aims of providing some relief through, through the tax system, through exemptions on the tax system to poorer households versus continuing to provide um, additional exemptions and, and benefits to richer households that don't really need uh, that much in, in, in the country. So th there's a balance there that needs to be achieved uh, because it's not as simple as, as it may appear in the first instance. Um, I think that the question on NAF was answered uh, by my co-author in the chat, but just for the benefit of the audience, even within uh, social protection um, transfers, cash transfers in the country like NAF, uh, there is scope to, um, to, to target them better. Um, so in fact, the current capital expansion is using an improved targeting mechanism to reach much more the poorer households. So there is scope uh, without needing to increase the budget, just keeping, keeping the same to think about how better target social transfers. Um, I think that was what I have. I um, don't know if Matt would like to come um, say something else about this comment or if we take uh, something else from the audience. Yeah, well, um, I think Mr. Um, yeah, Musa Sackett um, wants to do a correction, I think, in, if, if you want to make that. Uh, and I want you, Laura, to think and to tell us um, how other countries have sort of moved and improved uh, uh, the distributional impact of social spending. Uh, what are the best practices? What could be done uh, in order to sort of uh, uh, really improve and enjoy the um, uh, the benefits of this public spending, which uh, at least in, in, in the GSF, we conducted recently a study uh, on the health sector where uh, we argue that it's not a matter of how much you spend uh, or increase the allocation as much as it is how to better manage the available resources before you start demanding for more. Uh, I'll leave, Matthew, do you want to, to come in on, on this, please? Yes, thank you. So uh, I'll just add a, a couple of quick points, uh, a couple of which you have raised. So sort of three things that I would note is, um, you know, Dr. Kassan, uh, put up the tax revenues as a percent of GDP showing Jordan to be particularly low. And, and he's, he's absolutely right at under 11%. This is, this is very low. Um, and in that first chart that Laura put up that showed what percentage of, how much did you bet pay in taxes and how much 
did you benefit by spending? And you saw it was only the richest 10% that made any net contribution into the fiscal system. This normally in most countries crosses between about the fourth and sixth deciles. So in other words, the bottom half of the country tends to benefit more from public spending and the richest half of the country tends to pay a bit more in taxes than they get back. And in Jordan, most of the country is receiving more spending and not paying uh, into the tax system. And this is and this is a big issue. And I think it comes to a question you raised, taxation without representation or representation without taxation, which is, you know, Jordan aspires, it's it's already an up, upper middle income country, but it aspires to be to be a high income country. To get there, you're gonna need public investments, investments in human capital, health and education, investments in public infrastructure, investments in the new digital economy. Uh, and those investments have to be financed. And there's no high income country that doesn't have a significant proportion of its revenues, its public revenues come from personal income tax. And that is something that also Dr. Gassan put out, the personal income tax contribution in Jordan is, is particularly low. And so I, I think these are, these are salient issues. It, the, the other thing I would raise is this, which Lara also mentioned and was mentioned uh, by the discussants is um, GST and tax uh, expenditures. Yes, the poor benefit from uh, zero rated or preferential rates on foods and other important staples. And it is actually more of their uh, spending share than it is for rich households. But the absolute amount of money goes much more to richer households because they just spend more in total, including these categories. And so it is a potential source of uh, extra revenue that you know, the government could be using to finance uh, health, education, social protection um, and infrastructure. But at the same time, if you do remove these, you will have an impact on poorer households. So you have to, if, if you do go to a simplified uh, GST system by closing these exemptions, you will gain more revenues, but you have to reinvest at least part of that into sort of the social protection system to 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 cushion the impact. Um, so sort of that there there's some thoughts off the top of my head. Now, uh, finally, um, you asked about how do other countries do this? It's a combination of of two things. <laughs> one of which you've already mentioned. One is how do you get more revenues? in a progressive way. So for example, expanding the personal income tax base uh, rather than the, the, the GST tax base. Um, and and you know, how, can, how do you do that through tax capacity and administration and the reduction of evasion, which we've already been discussed. And the other part is how do you spend what you're spending at the moment better, which is exactly what you said, which is, is the best social spending things like cheap electricity and water, which do benefit the poor, but you know, are consumed in larger amounts by richer households who consume more of these goods? Or is it through targeting, you know, for example, direct cash support to poorer households through things like Takaful and NAF, um, which are, are just, they reduce poverty and inequality much more for the amount of money that is spent. So there is a question of thinking about what do we spend now? Is it the most effective way? And how would we raise additional revenues to make the public investments we need to become a high income country? Um, thank you, Matthew. Uh, the, the, let's, let's, let's also um, state this fact. The reason why Jordan and many other developing countries are resorting to GST or sales tax or indirect taxes it's easier to collect, easier to impose, uh, easier to track. While direct taxes, uh, it does have some, to be honest, political uh, implications because you directly deduct from uh, the salaries. And also it needs or it requires some institutional capacity, which unfortunately, since 1992, when we start imposing general sales tax, and then progress into VAT, we haven't done much in that regard. And, and this is where now, even when the, the counter argument on the GST is that regressive in the sense, although you're, you're right in, in the sense of that when you 
have exemptions from general sales tax, uh, richer uh, consumers uh, tend to benefit more because they consume more. However, the other side of the argument is that as part of the income of the poorest segment of the society, it represents a higher proportion of their income level as well. So it's regressive by nature. And unless you start addressing or we addressing this, of course, you cannot start deducting the general sales tax or the GST without also addressing the issue of how you, or to be sure that you are going to balance your revenue because as Dr. Ghassan has mentioned, we're running a budget deficit historically, and you cannot compromise that because then it will have some certain implication on the rest or the other part of the macro stability of the economy. So, so unless you build that capacity, you are not going anywhere with the GST, and probably you can't revisit these exemptions, but politically it's not easy. Let's, let's face it, because now the items that are uh, enjoying a low rate of sales tax are items that either classified as necessities or uh, uh, items that are consumed by lower middle income group or the, 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 the poor segment of the society. So, so this is something that uh, if we're talking about uh, social uh, in, uh, reducing inequality and improving distribution and impact of whatever either spending or tax expenditures, this is something that uh, we need to keep um, in mind. Um, uh, I don't see many hands um, to uh, join the discussion. Uh, I see some good names, but uh, they seem just to enjoy the listening. I know that uh, Her Excellency Reem Abu Hassan, who are our ex-Minister of Social Development with us. Uh, Her, Your Excellency, if you have a comment to make, because you've dealt with the poor segment of our society, I would really love to hear from you uh, your reflection on what we're discussing, if you can join us in the discussion. Otherwise, then I'll get back to Laura and Saadiya for their comments on, on, on this overall topic. And I'll give the floor to Musa Sakit, who is uh, our member and who is also coming from the uh, industrial sector. Mr. Musa, Fadal Abu Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Saif. Uh, excellent discussion. I cannot agree more with what you have said. I, I can add that also the purchasing power is disrupted uh, as a result, which we need it, especially uh, in these times. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ghassan, for the excellent presentation, excellent numbers. I especially loved the uh, productivity uh, tax slide, uh, which is extremely important and shows uh, uh, without a doubt that uh, the, the high uh, um, tax will definitely uh, incur uh, low productivity. Uh, especially in Jordan, we have an upside pyramid, or, or what I call an upside pyramid. The sales tax uh, revenue uh, is three times the income tax revenue, which definitely uh, adds to the disruption of the in, uh, economic uh, growth uh, of, uh, internally. So this is very important to look at if we need uh, to look for more growth, uh, especially in these uh, hard economic uh, times. Uh, my correction actually or comment is that uh, the, the, uh, um, one of the slides you mentioned uh, in terms of the tax rates the industry in terms of the law, unfortunately, last year or two years ago, uh, there is a, a constant increase for it to reach 20%. You have indicated that it's 14 or 15%, but actually it will uh, come up to uh, 20%. So this is the comment and the correction that I wanted to add. Taking in insight or in, in hindsight, the importance of actually increasing the income tax revenue uh, and decreasing the sales tax revenue. This is extremely important if we need more economic growth. Thanks a lot again. Reem, please. Uh, back, back to you, Dr. I was, I was muted. I want to move the uh, mics to uh, Her Excellency Reem Abu Hassan, please. 
Thank you, uh, Your Excellency, for uh, uh, asking me to comment. Um, the comment I would have is that we've seen uh, how NAF had uh, progressed in uh, the way it is doing its business, let's say, in identifying uh, different uh, beneficiaries. I want to highlight the fact that out of the 14 or 15 categories that NAF deals with, you are talking more than 50% are category, the category um, related to women. And with, uh, the, uh, with the increase of uh, the population, there are always an increase in uh, the number of beneficiaries who would need the direct financial support. So um, it is always easy to say that there, there are, we need to uh, redesign uh, NAF, we need to get the ghosts out and so on, but we uh, neglect the fact that we are having more and more people who are becoming poor because of the financial situation. And if we look at um, uh, Takaful 3 that, is, uh, that has been uh, uh, started by uh, NAF, uh, we, where it is targeting uh, uh, the poor uh, families where you actually have the working poor, and uh, then you will not be decreasing the number. Actually, I, what I think there will be an increase in the number because if NAF would be uh, dealing with uh, the poor who already have work and the income is not enough, then there, there should be a new thinking towards how to support those working poor. And uh, Dr. Brahim, you are aware that 70% of the poor of this country are poor who already are working and the income is not enough. So my, my question would be, is that if we are thinking that NAF at one point, the, there will be an ability to decrease uh, the number of recipients from NAF, I don't think that that could be the solution. The solution is to target more of the working poor and help them with a supplemental income so that we ensure they stay productive and they try uh, to uh, cover what their families need. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. This is uh, the phenomena of working poor is cannot be underlined actually. And uh, even while uh, one of the issues that we're talking about, those who are subjected to the personal income tax. Uh, and in, in, in the graph, you, you represented that it's only the 10th decile of the society that are really contributing to the direct income tax. And if you look at also at the number of those who are subjected to the income tax in Jordan, it's staggeringly, actually it is quite low. And even when you talk about either 12,000 or 24,000, well, Let's face it, the average wage in Jordan is quite low. Therefore, the aggregate demand is quite low. Therefore, so, so it's, it's a cycle. And I know this is at the heart of what is the World Bank should be looking at as well in terms of supporting development. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll get it back to you, Laura, Matthew, and Saadiya for, uh, for a closing uh, remark on this, please. Thank you. Um, yes, in, in, indeed, I, I, I have two comments. Um, to make with respect to that uh, last last point on, on NAF. And firstly, yes, to stress that when we look at recent uh, NAF reforms, the expansion to capital reforms, indeed we see that that's a sign of, of going in the right direction in terms of, of uh, the social protection transfers uh, themselves. Uh, but, but completely agree that this discussion cannot be disentangled from the overall uh, situation of the country, the overall country performance, productivity, the jobs uh, situation in the country. Um, you cannot have uh, just a discussion on, on just cash transfers without thinking about how the country as a whole uh, is doing. And, and yeah, indeed, the, the, the working poor is, is but one of the uh, aspects that will affect however, however good we do on, on the transfer system if there is, if the economic situation in the whole country is not uh, doing better, there, there will be a limit to how much we can do through, through uh, the transfers. Um, so, so yes, um, much appreciated on that. Thank you for the comments. Um, Matt, if you have so many final remarks and thoughts. 
Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Lara. Just a final two final points to me, which are really just responses to the discussion and, and agreement. The first is, yes, income taxes require greater tax capacity and administrative capacity. And that's why you see it's, it's not a mistake that it's only high income countries where personal income taxes represent a significant proportion of the public revenue. So you do need more investments in your tax administrative capacity to increase the personal income taxes. But this is also how you finance the investments that move you to being a high income country. So it's a little bit of chicken and egg, but, but, but those investments and in, in that administrative capacity need to be made and they pay off. And, and the second thing, and I think this is perhaps the most important thing uh, maybe of, of the whole discussion is about the communication strategy. So Dr. Ibrahim actually raised this. I think, I think there, when you talk about tax reform, it's political. You do need to do it as a package, but you need to talk about how tax reform is actually part of a broader way in which public finances are used. Uh, and so first is who is paying what? And if we talk about income tax, it's not just that top 10% that's paying it. That, that was actually hiding the fact that it's actually about the top 2.5% who are paying yeah. income tax in Jordan, which is very low. Um, and so there's, there's a, if you communicate this, your average Jordanian is not going to pay any income tax, even if you, you know, significantly reduced exemptions and changed the rates. Uh, this is just a matter of communication. I know it's very sensitive, and I know that obviously there were the protests a few years ago about this, but I wonder to what extent people protesting actually knew who would be paying it. I think the second thing on communication is, what are you getting for your money? No one wants to pay tax. If you say, would you like to pay more tax? In a perception survey, no one's going to say yes. But when you say, okay, but what if we have these taxes and it finances, you know, better public transportation, it finances, you know, better health and education services, it finances investments in telecommunications, then you start to see this idea of taxation representation, which you raised, which is no one wants to pay tax, but people want public investments. And so who pays it and what do you get for it? It's, it's being able to communicate this clearly that builds public support for what are necessary reforms, I, I think, in, in Jordan. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Um, Saadiya, do you have any final comments to make? Yes, Dr. Saif, uh, thank you so much. I think it has been an uh, excellent discussion and uh, I have really enjoyed it. As a fiscal economist, I think the core issue that we can come circling back to is the issue of fiscal space. And the fact that you need to create a fiscal space in order to uh, generate necessary investment and uh, to create growth. And something that we have been seeing over the past last 15 years is that the growth trajectory for, for Jordan is continuously decreasing. And one of the graph that uh, Dr. Hassan also put forward, and if you look at that, you will, you're will you also seeing that the recurrent spending, it's almost consuming 80% uh, consistently of the total spending, which is quite different from the past where uh, in the past uh, in the, the, the two decades, the, the capital spending used to have a larger share. I think one, the, why this piece was so super important for us to talk about, and I think it has been taken in that light was that this entire discussion has to be beyond just the tax system. Sometime uh, the tax system becomes a prominent piece of the discussion and the total fiscal totality of the fiscal policy is missed because one of the idea behind this paper and these studies is that you still have degrees of freedom to move within the system, even though the, you may feel that the system is not churning well, right? And that's, that's what, what is coming out uh, from this powerful study is that, look, either we can keep talking about increasing the pie, that is an aspirational discussion. It has to hap happen eventually for Jordan to, to be launched and uh, to get to a new growth trajectory. But the other discussion in parallel that has to happen is also about the fact that within the same pie, you still have space as Laura's, the last slide alluded to, for the fact that you can still do better for the monetary poverty side, and you can also do better in terms of reduction of inequality. In fact, even in the current environment, you still have a potential to keep the dollar sign neutral and still promote uh, progressivity of the system. 
So, so this is the most thought pro provoking uh, point that I do want you to take, a, take out of this, no question. Tax system in Jordan is complex and a lot more needs to, needs to be done and everything, uh, most points that, that are mentioned, mentioned are quite ballpark. It's a, quite a complex discussion if you want to get into it. But with that discussion, it's also important to acknowledge that if we feel that we still have a limited fiscal degrees of freedom to move within the current system, even then we have a potential to do better. For example, I look at the bar that Laura placed and if you look at the, uh, the, the, the kaful in terms of the budget going to it and the fact that the, where the dotted uh, green uh, is appearing uh, uh, on top of it, that is very clearly signal, signaling that if you have room to, as was the case in the current budget where the budget, budget uh, bread subsidy is no longer there, this, 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 is a, this is a question of reallocation. So where do you re reallocate that, let's say 120 billion, do you reallocate to X, Y, Z, or do you reallocate to something that is the most buck of the money? So this kind of a tool is a very powerful tool for Ministry of Finance to think about very practically, because it is putting the entire piece in totality, of course, with the caveat that there are certain data constraint, which, constraints which will always be the part of any particular study. And you can still think about the fact that you can, you can do more within the system and you are still feeling constraints. So I think, so I think that's, the, that's the most important piece for, uh, that we want to leave here is that uh, more can be done even in the current uh, scenario, but yes, the, there's, there's a lot more that can, can be done as far as the tax system, tax administration is, is con concerned. And that's also a separate discussion. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Saadiya. Thanks, Laura, Matthew, for your contribution. Thanks for uh, both uh, Ali and Ghassan for their uh, valuable comments. Now we have another event on the, uh, on the 1st of April. We'll continue this development series. Um, and I, Cannot agree more with the last comment made by you, Sadia, on again uh, improving what you describe as the distributional impact, the effectiveness of this public spending. And before, uh, again, you know, keeping the dollar sign as it is, but we need really to improve how we are utilizing these resources. And there's a lot that is going into waste or whatever we want to call it. But but clearly, before we uh, add to the uh, tax burden, we need to. Uh, consider uh, uh, how to improve it. Uh, we know that we have a lot of uh, tax expenditures. We discussed that with uh, His Excellency Dr. Omeya a few weeks ago uh, when he was Deputy Prime Minister and responsible for this file. And we think we'll continue. We were talking about changing the narrative and bringing some new thoughts on how we can manage. And I think the discussion that is happening and taking place now in the country, in Jordan, it's all about really uh, talking about how inefficient we have been in, in few areas. And this is probably an area where we can look at how, really how we can improve our performance in this. I appreciate this session. We look forward to continue this series of discussions. Uh, we will be approaching you soon regarding the uh, next session, which is on Social Security Corporation to add uh, coverage, uh, expansion, and more adequate, equitable, and sustainable pension system, which is, again, as important as the system is. Uh, thank you for sharing us. Thanks for our uh, audience, and thanks for those who contributed to the discussion today and those who attended as well. Thank, thank you, you for the second thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay.